history of Microsoft. It was the year 1980. Mount St. Helens erupted in Washington State, covering the surrounding areas in ash. Ordinary People, starring Mary Tyler Moore, won the Oscar for Best Picture. And President Carter declared a U.S. boycott of the Olympic Games in protest of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And in 1980, Microsoft was ready to start the new decade with a bang. And on the first day of the year, consumers were in awe as Microsoft announced its first consumer-oriented application software, Typing Tutor. A few months later, on April 2nd, Microsoft introduced the Z80 soft card, a circuit board that plugs into the Apple II computer, allowing Apple users to run CPM applications with only minor modifications. Then in June, Microsoft gets a new hire, a charismatic young man named Steve Ballmer. He is responsible for handling operations, including personnel, finance, and the legal areas of the ever-growing business. About a year after that, I hired a friend of mine from college, Steve Ballmer, who was very good at hiring people. And so he could see that we, were, we had more projects that we wanted to do than we could. And he was able to almost double the size of the company and people every year for the next five years. So it really started to change in character where I had you know, written a high percentage of the code myself until we got to Seattle and reviewed you know, everything that people were doing to the point where um, you know, we were setting up a lot of autonomous teams and having to do a lot more in terms of what was our methodology and how did we interview people uh, just to, to stay up with all the uh, projects we were going after. When Steve came in, um, I was spending more time with him because the, the business side was important, managing and organizing uh, and what were we going to do about international. And so uh, it was great that Steve was smart enough and personal enough that even though he didn't have a technical background, the programmers accepted him. That was very rare. We, we really didn't believe non-programmers should manage programmers. And we didn't do that until I think it was 83 before Steve actually directly managed developers. But the developers accepted him early on because he, he was smart. He would sit and listen to them, um, understand the things that they really liked to do. And so that, that fit in. I got a lot of benefit out of, uh, of Steve going around and always knowing what, what people were, were thinking about. Two months later, on August 25th, Microsoft announced a portable Unix-based operating system for 16-bit microprocessors called Xenix OS. Now, while Microsoft was busy going portable, Apple was busy going public. With 4.6 million shares, it was the largest offering since Ford Motor Company went public in 1956. In October, IBM hired Paul Allen and Bill Gates to create an operating system for a new personal computer. Microsoft took the deal and bought the rights for a simple operating system developed by Tim Patterson at Seattle Computer Products to use as a basis for the new code. In addition to hiring Microsoft, IBM allowed Paul Allen and Bill Gates to keep the marketing rights to the operating system known as DOS. In 1980, computer software hit high gear. There was Olympic Decathlon, the game, MSORT, and RamCard, memory expander for Apple II. It was the year 1980. Microsoft employed 40 people and ended the year with sales totaling $8 million. In five short years, Bill Gates and Paul Allen, along with their growing team, turned a small business into a huge success. And the new decade offered many new opportunities for the company slowly becoming a household name.